Hey guys, and welcome back to Ganji Plans. Um, if you have been around for a while, then you might recognize this. It's been a bit of a delay. Um, these, I got two binders, and there's also a sticker binder that I haven't set up yet um, because I have just been dealing with a lot of people getting sick at my house for the last several months. It has been, I mean, you know, again, if you've been around, you know. Um, so I haven't set these up. I got these sent to me from a company called Unikeep back in October, um, end of October, I think. Uh, and I filmed an unboxing and first impressions video, which I will link in the corner. Um, I got, like I said, a sticker journal and then this garden journal, a garden planner, um, which I hadn't set up until just recently. And I did just recently because I've been planning for my spring garden. Um, you know, the weather's starting to warm up a little bit. The, um, sunset is starting to get pushed back a little farther and I'm getting really excited for the spring and summer. I'll be on maternity leave um, for a good chunk of it so I'll be able to be real involved and hopefully get to spend a lot of time out there um, with the baby and stuff. So I am looking forward to that and so I set this up and uh, that's what I'm going to show you today. <laughs> so if you missed that original unboxing video then um, here it is. It's got like a um, uh, landscape architecture type design on the front that wraps around so that's pretty I didn't want to mess with that it looks good um, I think I could change out the maybe I'm not sure actually I've been thinking of being able to change out the cover but maybe not maybe it's kind of stuck in there oh no it comes out the bottom I think maybe not maybe not all right well anyway there you go. It looks good. It's, uh, it's fine. It um, has like this clip on the side. So I was worried that it would be difficult to write in if you've got that lip because it's basically like a box with a binder inside. Um, but it actually has not been too bad and I find it's really great to be able to just toss pens in there. I was using these for some color coding for a chart that you'll see that's in here. This was for it's blue because it was the only friction pen I had currently with working ink. So whatever, and I wanted to do some like tentative um, garden layout stuff. <clears throat> so I went ahead and I labeled the four tabs that came with it. It also came with all of these like um, pouch envelope things, which I think I'm gonna take out and use in my sticker binder instead, um, because I don't trust this to be seed storage because it would just get everywhere. Um, but there's like, you know, page protector type pocket things in here, uh, which will be great for the sticker storage. Um, it came, like I said, four tabs, and I just used my label maker to make it pretty. Um, I've got spring, summer, fall, winter, data, and then the last one is blank, which is um, just like whatever's in the back. If I need it for something else, I can label it then, but for now, it's just like spare pages. Um, it's got a nice front uh, thing that matches the outside garden journal, and let's go. Tab one, spring, summer, which is where we are now. I started here with the grid here, garden plot. Um, this is where I was using that blue friction pen, as you see here. So I'm, I got, grabbed a little bit of B-roll from the garden. You can see the layout here. Um, these new four by four planters are, like I said, new as of uh, this last summer, later summer. Um, it was for, it was before my daughter's birthday in September because um, we had a backyard party and we wanted to get that done. Um, so we did a little bit of renovation in the backyard. It's looking great. It's feeling great. Um, and now I have increased my, I'm doing the math, increased my garden space by 66% ish. So that's pretty awesome. Um, these, I just used one block as one square, like one square foot, uh, which is perfect for square foot gardening. Anyway, it all fits. I used the, um, like a, a Sharpie to do the actual border of the planter itself, which did on this paper bleed through a little bit. Um, so I think maybe for the next season or the next year or whatever, I might just turn this page upside down um, and get it in on the right side again. And that way it'll be the right layout. Um, and then just, you know, <laughs> the word notes will be upside down. The word garden plot will be upside down. Maybe I'll cover it with washi tape or something, but, um, I can kind of give you a quick little bit of a garden tour as it is right now. Um, 
Again, there's some B-roll. I've still got some tomatoes going, some cherry tomatoes, and then also some um, some brandy ones have actually been doing pretty well for the winter. It just takes a long time for them to um, ripen. And also we got a lot of rain around Christmas and that caused, there's unfortunately a few that were starting to blush at that time and they split so badly that they got rotten. So that was a shame. Um, we were able to salvage like half of a couple of them for some burgers, but it's been great still having some tomatoes into the winter. Um, last year, I think I tore out my tomatoes in the, the fall because, you know, if you listen to gardening advice from people who get snow, don't do that. Um, I am in zone 10B. I should have mentioned this. I'm in zone 10B um, in Southern California. And so I've just been gr continuing to grow my tomatoes. They're still doing fine. Um, I'm going to cut them way back and or get, pull them out and replace them uh, for the spring. The brandy wine is setting off a new shoot at the bottom, so that's just going to be my brandy wine plant. Um, I'll cut off all of last year's growth and just start from that one. Now it's healthy, it's in place, um, and so I'm hoping that that will be real good. So I put in these arch trellises, which again I'll show you in the b-roll. Um, currently I have snow peas growing on one of them and um, shelling peas growing on the other one. But for the next season, for the summer, when the peas stop producing, um, I'm going to put beans on, like green beans, on one side of this one. Uh, I've got some Kajari melon seeds I'm going to put on this side. Um, so that'll be pretty with like the pink flowers from the green beans and then the orange melons. That should be really pretty and fun. And then on the back one, I'm just going to do pickles on both sides. I am looking this summer and spring to be overwhelmed with cucumbers and tomatoes. <laughs> Because in the past, I have done what I think is a reasonable amount, and it turns out to be, like, fine, but not, like, overwhelming. And I want to be overwhelmed with abundance um, this year. So that's my plan, is two sides, like, four foot by one foot of uh, Boston Pickling Cucumbers. And then all of these little two by two sections, last year I tried to single stem my tomatoes, and after a while, I gave up on it because for one thing, it was a lot of work. And for another thing, it I was disappointed with how few tomatoes I was getting. So this year, I'm going to do cages. So I'm giving them twice as much space. Um, this spot here is where it's between the arches. So I don't have to reach around anything. So I'm going to put four in this, you know, four by four section. And then on the other side, we've got, like I said, the trellis here. So I'll put the tomatoes um, in the middle four by fours. Um, and so I'll be able to reach them from this side. Okay. And not have to like reach around and try to, you know, put, deal with anything small in the middle here. All the small stuff will be on the outside. Um, and I'll show you the list I've got going on, but it, basically all of these squares are tomatoes. I haven't picked the varieties yet because I'm probably just going to pick up starts because I had such a hard time starting tomatoes from seeds last year. Um, over here, I'm doing ground cherries and one pumpkin plant, which was great. Last year, we got a gorgeous carving pumpkin for Halloween. It was, I just was very proud of it. So I want to do that again, just at least get one pumpkin. And then over here, I'm going to do summer squash and just kind of let it go. <laughs> I, in the past, have tried training my, my summer squash to grow vertically. I didn't give it enough space. It got in the way. Um, this time, I'm just going to let it go and go kind of... Um, horizontal and just take over and cover the, the ground there. So that will be fine. We've got the melons going there. And then um, on this side, I'm going to try growing edamame. I never have before. I've just given it like a four by four section that I'm going to plant in. It looks like I can get maybe like six plants in there. They're pretty small. Um, and then I said, yeah, the small stuff there. So let's get moving through here uh, now that we've established the space we're working with. Um, this is really it. I think there's a couple of, oh yeah, there's a couple of pots that I've got, um, for some flowers, uh, hopefully. <laughs> so I used one of these basic garden diary pages, which just lined paper to do some planning of what varieties and stuff I wanted to do. So I picked like, I want to grow a green bean and I want to grow a yellow squash and I want to grow a melon and blah, blah, blah. And then I picked the varieties when I was shopping for seeds. Uh, I got this year I bought from, um, Baker Creek which is exciting. So I just got a few. Like I said, Boston pickling. I haven't tried that before. Last year I did um, homemade pickles. I was, I enjoyed them. They were good. I was a little disappointed with output. I'm looking for something that's going to be more prolific, but I'm also going to just plant a lot of it if I can. 
Um, so I've heard that Boston pickling is good. I'll give it a shot. Um, Marvel of Venice is a white green bean, really what I wanted from a green bean this year. Last year I grew, um, Kentucky Wonder, which are fine. They were tasty. They were easy to grow. Um, but I, they were hard to find in time and harvest and then they would get big and tough and not as good. So this year what I want is something that tastes good. Um, and something that is going to be easy to see and harvest. So this Marvel of Venice bean is like a white bean. Um, so I should be able to see it easier against the green foliage and pick them in time. That's the plan. Um, they also have really pretty purple pink kind of uh, flowers. So that should be really pretty on the arch. I was thinking of doing a dry bean, but I changed my mind. Because um, I don't think I could grow enough to actually like be enough for a meal. So it's just not worth it for me probably. It'd be pretty, but, um, I wanted to grow a yellow squash. In the past, I have tried growing a yellow crookneck that I just got the seeds from like Home Depot and two years in a row, it's sprouted. It's been like a four inch tall little plant. One year I got one crookneck squash to grow on it, but it just, for whatever reason, doesn't grow for me. I don't know if I just got a dud package of seeds. I'm trying a different variety this year, the lemon squash. It should be fine. I was thinking of trying a fun one, but I realized I don't really have enough room. The zucchini is going fine. If I have two zucchini plants and let them go and not try to single stem them up a pole like last year, um, hopefully they should be fine for me. And if the yellow squash also works, I should have enough summer squash. Um, the Kajari melon, if you like are on YouTube, I feel like it's kind of had a, a bit of a vogue. Um, the uh, Roots and Refuge, she uses, she loves them. And so I'm like, they're really pretty and orange and smallish. And last year we did watermelons. They, um, I like a little personal size watermelon and they got eaten by bugs. Um, they weren't very prolific. They got eaten by bugs, the ones that did produce. And so, and it was so hard to figure out when they were ripe. So I'm going to go for a melon. I can train up a trellis and that will like come off easy when it's ripe, possibly even fall off when it's ripe so that I know don't worry, I'll tie them up so they don't crack. Um, so it's going to be easier to know when to harvest and they should hopefully be resistant to whatever it was that was eating those watermelons when they were sitting on the ground. Um, so that's the plan. It's, it's more of a, um, like cantaloupe style type of a melon, but that's fine also because the watermelons we got had a lot of seeds in them, which was difficult for my toddlers to eat. Um, and so having just the seeds in the middle of like a cantaloupe, I think will be easier and hopefully they'll enjoy that. I've never grown grand, ground cherries before. Um, I hear that once I put them in a spot, they will be there forever. So uh, this is my ground cherry bed now. Um, then, uh, yeah, the Midori Giant Edamame or the variety I got. Um, we'll give that a shot. And then this is all the stuff. I had eight spots for smaller things. So uh, I think I'm actually gonna have two spots for pepper plants. Last year I grew one. It only ever got just a few inches tall. I produced a single pepper at the end of the season and then I cut it all back to over winter. And then um, let me link up in the corner a channel I found that's local. If you're also in Orange County, um, there's a YouTuber, a study as she grows that grows in um, Garden Grove, I think. And she was just posted a winter tour like last week. And she showed an overwintered pepper plant that she hadn't cut back at all. Like I had followed a guide and I'd cut up all the foliage and now it's looking really brown. I don't know if it's still alive. I was hoping that it would be fine, um, but it may have died. So I'm starting enough for two square feet, I think, of peppers because uh, I'd like to be able to have that for, I'm not a big fan of peppers myself, but I can make some salsa if they're like ground up, that's fine. I hate bell peppers. I'm not going to do a sweet pepper. Um, Genovese basil and Thai basil. These, this will get nice and bushy. I'm sure the Thai basil, I also should be better about pruning back because it flowers quickly. Um, then I'm going to try flat leaf and curly parsley. The first year I had my garden, by the way, I haven't started gardening till 2020. My first year I had a flat leaf that we got as a start and it was great. Um, I was able to harvest enough for penne and vodka every week. Um, this year I tried growing curly parsley from seed and it didn't grow great. Then I bought a start and that is okay. And then like when the weather cooled down, the other one started to take off. 
I haven't had as much parsley this year, so I'm going to go ahead and just do two of the square feet of parsley. We can just put it as a garnish on everything, give it out or whatever. It should be fine. Um, chives and green onions and two more squares. Because uh, I, once you have a garden, there's no reason to purchase green onions <laughs> ever again. Um, and then I said, yeah, two pepper plants. So that will be those eight spots. And then I did some um, sort of brainstorming of the kinds of types of uh, tomatoes I want. I think I'm going to do like two cherry tomatoes, these two here. Um, so if you go under the arches, you're going on a little bit of a fun adventure, you know, you see your melons, you see your pickles, and you've got your ground cherries over here and your cherry tomatoes over here, it's little snacking things um, that you can just, you know, in one, one side of the garden. I don't know, that's my thought. Um, and then I'm gonna do the rest like slicers. I think I'm gonna do at least one, maybe two like hybrid slicers, like a, you know, big boy, better boy, some sort of boy tomato. Um, like I said, I'm gonna be just buying starts probably from Home Depot if we can, because we have this Home Depot gift card that it's a whole saga. Um, but I'd also like to try two different types of cherry tomatoes, make it fun. Um, and then I've heard good things about the Cherokee purple, so maybe I'll see if I can grab that because I hear that's pretty available. Those are just some ideas. I'm definitely going to have the brandy wine going, though, because it is, like I said, still going strong and just set up a new shoot at the bottom, which will be my main plant for the, the new year. So I did, um, I used this individual plant info sheet for a couple of the new plants that I've never grown before. Um, I didn't want to do this for everything because it would have been a lot of info for like that I didn't really need. But I've never grown grand cherries before, so I looked up some information, took down some notes, um, how long it takes to sprout, to mature, how to plant it. Um, I'm going to try to start seeds and then transplant versus, you know, direct sowing. Uh, it's notes to keep the soil mo moist. Um, it says it needs temperatures in the 70s or higher, which we're pretty much there at this point. Um, and I just kind of took some notes on it. I, it was really just helping me to get my brain around it as I was planning uh, where it was going to go, you know, when it was going to be able to fit into the garden, when I needed to start the seeds, that kind of thing. Uh, I did the same thing for the soybean. Like I said, I've never grown a soybean before. I'm excited to um, steam them and with a little salt and garlic maybe. Um, so that will be fun, hopefully. So I still have a couple blank ones in here. I left them in place um, and don't probably I'm not going to use them this year. So I should probably move them to the back. Oh, there's a lot of these. All right. Probably could have fit the entire garden for the spring and summer on these. So that's what I've got for spring and summer. Then I have my fall winter one here. Um, currently, this tab isn't really serving its purpose for fall winter because I'm not gonna like put info in for the current um, garden because it's doing its own thing and I you know I harvested a cauliflower and pulled out the plant like it's it's in that phase where I'm moving things out getting ready to move new things in but I took this bloom and harvest page which I don't know why what the bloom and the harvest means like Feel like it's it's one or the other either you're growing it for its blooms and then you harvest the blooms or you're growing it for fruit and you harvest the fruit but maybe you care like when you have to have your pollinator plants available i am not uh into the, that that um hands-on for it all of this but anyway i just sort of looked up when the best time to plant uh everything is so i b instead of b pretend it's a p i didn't cross it out but plant and harvest so like I said plant and harvest so I looked up for my region the best time months to plant cucumbers green beans blah 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 um, and so sort of give myself some plans um, yeah I had Malabar spinach last year it never really did much I was hoping that it might kind of take off again in the spring it's still there but I think I'm just gonna pull it out because um, it'll be in the way of where I want my pickles um, and I tried like one leaf at one point and I was like, uh, the mucilage, it's a lot. Um, and I do try to plant the pumpkin or can definitely plant the pumpkin a little bit later in this window because I wanted to make sure it was ready for Halloween. There's a time sensitive thing there, you know, this is last year. Um, I planted it early in like March or April and, um, it was ready in like July and then it just sat in our, um, 
laundry room for months just waiting it was fine it won a prize at our local farm supply store and it made a fantastic um jack-o'-lantern which i can show a picture of here um anyway summer squash has quite a long lifespan here and then yeah i'm planning trying to decide which things i need to start from seed and which things i need to buy as starts and which things i need to direct so and when and so like thinking about when things are coming out of the garden when they're going in I might just um, give in to my impatience and like pull something out before it is completely done for the season because I'm tired of eating say snow peas and would rather eat green beans for example so there's more of these pages um, in here I will I only filled in really the spring summer crops so I will fill in for the fall winter stuff as we get towards the end of summer and I start getting antsy for my fall garden um and again if you're not local here like basically I plant stuff in this like October November no October and then it grows through until like March um just all the way through the winter because we have very very mild winters here we don't get frost um and then this data one here I I looked up average temperatures for my area and average rainfall and it's like as looking at this it said in July that your high is 87 and I laughed like the day my daughter came home from the hospital in 2018 July 4th 2018 it was 115 degrees out so I feel like this is it's nice data to have especially the rainfall stuff because as you can see we get a lot of rain in January February and December right the rest of the year it's pretty dry and we rely on irrigation um <laughs> but yeah I, I I cannot look in this and go oh well it's only gonna get up to like 90 at the highest ever because my plants will get burnt to a crisp if I'm not really careful on those really really hot days tomatoes drop blossoms it's yeah um but anyway I was thinking that I would try to do like an average temperatures for every year just kind of to keep historical data I was gonna do that for the last few years it's been really hard to find a really good way to do that without doing the math myself to figure out the average highs and lows and then as you see an average high doesn't tell you much like I want to know the absolute high I think um anyway so weather log I'm obviously not gonna do daily readings like that's too much pests and disease um i haven't used these yet but i will probably if i get something um i mostly deal with like right now aphids on my uh brassicas i dealt with them really bad on my corn that one year i tried to grow corn and failed miserably um but just sort of you know notes on trying different methods of of pest control i'm you know I am an organic gardener because I am too cheap to buy anything that's not organic to deal with bugs. Um, and then this is, <laughs> you can see, oh, purchase records. I bought seeds from Burpee once. I bought them from Park Seed once. Um, that is the extent of the information that I have on that. But this year I just wrote that Baker Creek has a two-year warranty period. So that's nice to know. And then in the back on this last spare pages, there's some spare garden plots or one. Uh, more spare purchase records, more spare lined garden diary. I'm not going to be doing long form journaling in the garden, not on this anyway, um, but it's lined paper, useful for things. I did my uh, variety planning. And then, like I said, I'm going to take these out and put them in the uh, sticker binder, which, by the way, this is how you these pop up like this. Um, this has like a little, I don't know, I'm sure you can't see that as a little peg that goes into this hole. It is not super easy to take things in and out, especially off the left side because it gets stuck on this like a hook. Um, but I really like the convenience of the, um, the like container binder thing where it's like a box. I think that's gonna be super useful for the stickers, which like I said is next. Oh, hey, hi ring light. Um, so, Anyway, it's, uh, it doesn't turn like perfectly easily. So there are cons to the system, but um, like I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to the sticker binder. That's gonna be next. Um, and I don't know when exactly. Uh, I never really figured out, there wasn't an overwhelming opinion whether you wanted to watch me do it live or just 
see a tour like this afterwards. If you have strong burning opinions after seeing this video, please do comment below and let me know. Um, but I'm probably leaning towards doing it more like this because otherwise I feel like I'm just never going to get it done. And my stickers are still living in an oatmeal box in my drawer, kind of inaccessible. So, um, thank you again to Unikeep for sending me these. Uh, they, they sent them to me for free, full ex uh, disclosure. Um, just for my honest opinion review, I, that's, you know, obviously that affects people. I don't know if I would have bought it with the money or not because I forget how much these cost, but it's from unikeep.com, which I will link below. Um, and you can check out, I'll link to this specific journal as well as to the website itself. Um, let me know if you have questions or comments and I will see you guys in the next video next week. I think we're doing a weekly plan with me back to my normal pocket planner stuff. And then you can look forward to seeing the sticker binder set up when I get around to it. It might be next month, honestly, but if you subscribe, you won't miss it. So I will see you then. Bye.